Good morning. Good morning. I think time change has affected uh, some people this morning. But we're glad that you uh, were not affected, at least too badly. Uh, glad that you're here this morning. But if you're like me, uh, maybe it was a little bit uh, busy. It was a little bit uh, hectic this morning. And so as we've been doing for quite some time here, I'm just inviting you to take just a few moments just to take a deep breath, maybe close your eyes and begin to prepare your heart to worship the Lord. This is a time where our eyes, our hearts, our minds are focused upon the Father. And every, everything that has been, uh, uh, has been placed upon our shoulders, the weariness, the burdens that have been on us this week, we bring those this morning to the feet of the Father. He says to cast all of our cares upon Him because He cares about us. So this morning, just take a moment. Lay whatever it is that you're carrying before Him. He wants to take that from you. And let's enter into a time of worship. Father, prepare our hearts to worship you. Clear our minds. Allow us to see you more clearly this morning. Allow us to lift your name up, to make your name known to make your holy name known throughout all of the earth, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. If you are able, uh, please stand with us as we worship. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here.
Well, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we just declare there's nothing too difficult. Nothing too difficult for you. You're a miracle-working God, and time and again, you've proven yourself for us, your people. Lord, all we need to do is look to you. We don't need to fear. We don't need to worry. We don't need to dread. We simply need to turn to you. You're our source this morning. We readily admit that. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said amen. Amen, 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 amen. Well, praise God. I would like for you to do something for me. We're going to bring the lights up and give you an opportunity to look around and, and find someone and just share the peace of Christ with them today. Would you do that? Just go and give them a big smile and a handshake or hug their neck, whatever you're comfortable with. I'll tell you what, my, maybe you should just say thanks for fixing your clock and getting here on time. <laughs> Amen. God bless you as you greet one another in the name of the Lord. way to pray. Let your kingdom come, Lord. May your will be done in our lives on earth as in heaven. Amen. If you make your way back to your seats, I want to just uh, encourage all the kiddos who are 4 through 12 to go with Miss Amber and the leaders. There they go through the back way. If that, that way, if you're not already headed that way. I noticed a minute ago, it looked like Amber had her chicks in a row behind her there. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So all the kids are, are going out, ready to go upstairs. I think that's it. Excellent. Excellent. Jesus taught us to pray, not our will, but your will be done. Amen. Wow. That got a response, didn't it? <laughs> On earth as in heaven. That's what we're singing about as the kingdom of God would come into our lives. And may he be th in enthroned upon our hearts. If we're not careful, we let our own flesh and our own will, our own desires rule our actions. And so what Jesus was teaching us to pray was not my kingdom, Lord, but your kingdom come. And he prayed that way in the garden, and that's the way he taught us to pray as well. All right, so it is time to receive our morning tithe and our offering. And uh, so this is uh, obviously what we do to support God's work, to support our mission works around the the world and uh, to continue and further his kingdom's work here at Life Community Church. Thank you for being faithful and um, supporting, and we appreciate it so very, very much. Those of you who give online, majority of us just about anymore giving online. You can do that real simply um, by just going to our website, and there it is in front of you on the screen. You can give there, and um, or the old-fashioned way with a check or uh, cash. Just use the envelope in front of you, and um, let's read together. Uh, the liturgy that uh, Michael's put together for us to read. Uh, Holy Father, there's nothing I have that you have not given me. All I have and am belong to you. 
bought with the blood of Jesus. To spend everything on myself and to give without sacrifice is the way of the world that you cannot abide. But generosity is the way of those who call Christ their Lord, who love him with free hearts and serve him with renewed minds, who withstand the delusion of riches that chokes the word, whose hearts are in your kingdom and not in the systems of the world. I am determined to increase in generosity until it can be said that there is no needy person among us. I am determined to be trustworthy with such a little thing as money that you, Lord, may entrust me with true riches. And above all, I am determined to be generous because you, Father, are generous. It is the delight of your daughters and sons to share your traits and to show what you're like to all the world. So, Father, with that in mind, we give today. We give not um, out of out of a sense of um, drudgery, drudgery or, or, or anything like that. But, Lord, we give out of a cheerful heart. We give today, Lord, out of desire to be a blessing to your kingdom because you first gave to us. Bless every gift and every giver, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our guys are going to come and pass among you with the pans and receive the morning's offering.
that the shadows can't deny Your name cannot be overcome Your name is alive Forever lifted high Your name cannot be overcome Your name is alive That the shadows can't deny is with us. What comforting words. God is with you. God is with you now in this place. God is with you when you 
go forth from this place. God is with you in the darkest depths of your life and at the highest points in your life. God is with us. Aren't you thankful to be a child of God, a son and a daughter? Amen. Amen. Let's bring the lights up this morning as we prepare to dive into God's Word. It's always an exciting time for me. I don't know if it's exciting for you, but I enjoy diving into the study of God's Word. God's Word transforms us. It brings life to us. So this morning, uh, really glad everyone could make it here. If you didn't uh, get the time change, some, some people may be showing up. Maybe you'll just hang out for about 20 minutes or so, and some people might show up a little bit later. We'll just, I'll just, we'll just have a second service. We'll do a second service right after this one um, for those who didn't quite make it here. But this morning, we are going to continue in a time that we've uh, been spending over the past couple of weeks I really didn't know how long it was going to take uh, us to go through the Lord's Prayer, Um, but uh, maybe it'll be, I don't know, a month, month and a half or something like that. Um, We're going to spend time. We we didn't get a whole lot further this morning, but I think it's, uh, I don't know if it has been for you. Um, I've heard some stories. I've heard some people report back to me um, what God's been doing in their lives uh, through hearing more about what God is revealing in the Lord's Prayer. Um, what it means for us to be transformed in our desires through the prayer, um, and how to see it in, in maybe a new, white, new, new light and in new ways. I know that the study has done that for me, and I pray that it's been doing that for you, and I pray that it's been incorporated into your regular prayer rhythm, whatever that is. Um, I pray that that is being done. So this morning we continue in our study of prayer. We've been looking at the Lord's Prayer because we're entering into a season as a church that I want us in my desire, uh, and I believe God's desire is for us to become a praying church. When people think of Life Community Church, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I want them to know that we are a people who, who trust and believe in God's Word and that we are a people of prayer. As individuals, as we pray in in groups with one another and for one another, and as we pray as a congregation, corporately, all together, a people of prayer. It's a sign of our dependence. It's a sign of our our, our dependence and, and, and acknowledgement and recognition of our true source of power, our true source of life, and that is the Father, not ourselves. So, as we continue in this, this isn't just an effort to learn more about prayer. Instead, it's an effort to prepare our hearts for the Spirit to begin to transform us. Because when we enter into prayer, this is an avenue, a conduit in which the Spirit is transforming us by our dependence upon God, by our dependence upon His Word and His truth that is spoken to us. Because prayer is not just uh, an act of making requests unto God, but it is listening to God. It is an awareness and attentiveness to what God is doing in our lives. And so each week, my prayer as we continue in this time is that we grow in our desire to fellowship with the Father in prayer. So we abide with Him in the Word, we abide with Him in prayer. And then over the past two weeks, like I said, we've been examining the way Jesus taught His disciples to pray. And as simple as the Lord's Prayer may seem, because we've all heard it, we've just repeated it throughout our lives, I believe that there's no prayer that we could dream up that is more powerful than what Jesus instructed us to pray. So my hope is that through this time we're receiving a new revelation of what that is. So if you would, turn your Bibles or tap in your device, whatever it is, or just put your eyes on the screen to Matthew 6. Verses 9 through 13. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Jesus says, Then this is how you should pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we've also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That last part, depending on your translation, may or may not have that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you with open hearts, prepared to hear your word, to be transformed by your word. I pray that the Spirit, through the proclamation of your word, that the Spirit would do the work of illumination, would enlighten us to the truth of your word, and that we being exposed to the light, we being exposed to the truth, that we would not leave uh, being hearers only, but that we would leave being doers. We would receive your truth. We would receive how you view us. We would receive your words of, of truth that you speak over us the way that you view us, and that we would be exposed to, to the sin, to the hindrance that is in the way of devotion, full devotion to you, Father, that that revelation wouldn't be lost, Lord, but it would transform us that we would be changed by it. And Father, for the next few moments, I pray that you would allow the words that come forth out of my mouth to be birthed of your spirit and not of my flesh, empowered only by you, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So in this season, if I would just do a really quick recap, I hadn't planned to do that. But if I were to recap back all the way back to January 1, as you guys have heard uh, multiple times now, we're entering into this season. What does it look like to take on the easy yoke of Jesus? What does it look like to take on the teachings and the ways of Jesus and reject the teachings and the ways of the world that have shaped us, that have formed us, that have impacted who we are today, this expectation of achievement, this is, what I, this is the identity, this is who you are, this is who you need to be, this is what you need to achieve, this is what you need to become, all that's been warring against us each and every day. When we go into our job tomorrow, this is what we will be battling. It's a spiritual battle taking place over our identity and our purpose. So the goal is to establish our identity and purpose as children of God here to glorify the Father and live in a life that is with the Father, abiding in Christ. And then all of life being birthed out of a life spent with Christ, empowered by His Spirit. Because as in John 15, it says that all fruit is from the Spirit, we are the branch. He is the vine. The fruit is the Spirit. And so all good that we are going to produce is that of the Spirit. Proving us to be, what? Disciples. Remaining attached to the vine, remaining in the vine, producing much fruit. Glorifies the Father and proves us to be His disciples, as John 15 says. So this is the journey we're on. We looked at what it looks like to abide in God's Word, to remain in His Word, to read, hear, listen to His Word, and be doers of the Word. And now we're entering into this season of prayer. What does it look like to deepen our walk with the Lord in prayer? Through this, I want us to be exposed new ways of praying. Ways that allow us to get into a place where we pray uh, without ceasing as Scripture says, to remain in a place where we're constantly aware and constantly attentive to God's working and His Spirit moving in our lives, orchestrating each and every step, each and every encounter. With me? Some of you still waking up? Time change is getting to you? It's really dark right over here in the section, so I look over here. If I'm if I just staring at you oddly, it's because I can just barely see you. Um, so just ignore that. So we're in the Lord's Prayer. In the last, uh, the first week, we began looking at two ways that Jesus taught us not to pray. That's how he began. He was asked by the disciples, how, teach us how to pray. And he begins by saying, here's how you do not pray. He says, don't pray like the hypocrites, hoping to be seen and heard by everyone, both in and out of 
the temple. And then don't pray like the pagans who babble on and on in order to get their gods to respond. Because what does he say? For the Father already knows what you need. So enter into prayer with humility, not desiring for everyone to see and to hear you, and enter into prayer with trust. You don't have to babble on and on and on to get God to hear you. Why? Because he already knows what you need before you ask. Approach the Lord with humility and trust. And then we spent the rest of our time looking at the corporate nature of the Lord's Prayer, combined with the familial language. So our Father, when we pray our Father, we pray as not as individuals, but as part of the family of God. We are loved as sons and daughters, making us what? Brothers and sisters in Christ, belonging to one body. So our Father in heaven. So not only does He possess the love of a father, He is holy and righteous and rules and reigns from the heavens. So He has the love of a father, but He has the holiness of the Creator who rules and reigns over all. Those opening four words give us this healthy balance of the two most important attributes of God. And that is, He is love and He is holy. He is love and He is holy. And the two cannot be separated from one another. We need a healthy balance of His holiness and His love. One of these days we'll spend more time on that. Then last week we looked at three requests that Jesus instructed us to make. That both inspect and shape our desires. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So this is for the people around us as we pray for this, but it's also for us. It includes us. It says this, it says, we want your name to be made holy, not our own. It says, we want your kingdom to come, not our kingdom to be built. It says we want your will to be done, not our own will to be done. So these first three requests are desires of God that should be shaping and transforming our desires. We want our desires to become the desires that are of God. So we're praying God's desires here. If you've missed any of the last two weeks, I encourage you to go to Facebook or YouTube and, and go re-watch the first two weeks because it would really catch you up. I just gave you like a, a, a flyover of the time we spent over the last two weeks in the opening of this particular prayer. So this morning we pick up in verse 11. We've made it through 9 and 10 over the last two weeks, and this morning we will be in verse 11 where Jesus says to pray, Give us today... Our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. I think it's best to begin looking at this passage through the lens of the disciples. Because although that bread has remained a staple food in nearly all the cultures of human history, for us, bread doesn't quite share the same significance as it would have to the disciples. Throughout Scripture, bread has played an important role physically, but also symbolically. Bread has. Making its first appearance in Genesis 3.19. This is the first, first uh, 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 recording that we have of bread. All the way back in Genesis 3, when God tells Adam the consequences of the fall. He tells him this, "...by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread." Till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So instead of living in this garden, receiving this fruit, by the sweat of your brow you are going to be making bread, and this is what you are going to be eating. Here's where we first see bread. So given that bread was part of the daily diet, of these first century, the first century Greco-Roman world. So these disciples living in this time would have understood the significance, the, the essential nature of bread for their particular culture. The disciples would have gift of daily bread with who? 
They're in.
need, for all that is necessary to live the next day. It is a test, which leads me to a connection that cannot be avoided, in my opinion, when, I, when talking about bread, specifically because of what God has to say about bread. These are Jesus' words in Matthew 4.4, 4, when tempted by Satan to turn stones into bread. If you remember when Jesus was being tempted by Satan, he tempts him to turn stones into bread, and Jesus quotes Deuteronomy 8.3. He says this, he says, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You see, bread is a symbol of what rep represents life for us, but God says that life cannot be sustained on bread alone. Bread is not the only way in which we are able to live. What else is necessary? Obedience to every word that comes from the mouth of God. What did it say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but what? On every word that comes from the mouth of God. What's necessary for daily living is bread, but also spiritual power to obey. We need daily sustenance for our physical body, but that for our spiritual body, because we can't live on bread alone. And then the final point I want to make this morning, not my closing, but the final point I want to make is again the corporate language used. We're not just praying for our own need of daily bread when we pray this prayer because what does it say? Give us our daily bread. It doesn't say give me my daily bread. It says give us our daily bread. Bread. So when we pray this prayer, we're not just praying for our own need. We're included in the prayer, but we're praying for that of all of the people of God. We're saying, provide for those who have less than me. Give us all what we need for the day. Give me and all the people of, the go people of God what we need. All my brothers and sisters today, give us the daily bread that we need. Then beyond that, it takes us a step further. The Spirit of God begins to compel us to not merely advocate for their need, but to meet their need. Because here's the truth, is to, be, to pray this prayer that's why this prayer is both, it is a prayer, but it is also a way of living. Because I can't pray this prayer and say, give us today our daily bread, give us what we need, and also be aware and observe need in people's lives around me. Does that make sense? I can't sit here and say, give us our daily bread while I'm observing people without their daily bread. doing without while I have. And here's what's beautiful about this, is this. You can give freely of what you have excess of today. Why? Because you only needed what was necessary for today because God is providing tomorrow what is sufficient for tomorrow. So while we may think we need to hoard and hold on to what we receive today to last us until tomorrow, when there's need among us, this prayer should bring us out of our own need and into generosity for the people of God. Because why? We're praying, give us our daily bread. You can't pray this with the corporate language of for the body of Christ and observe need among us. As we pray the prayer of uh, the liturgy of generosity that we put up there each, each week. Let us give until, there are no, until it can be said that there are no needy among us. So to pray, give us this day our daily bread. 
requires something different of us. It requires more than words. It drives us to action. We can't sit by and observe need around us. And we can give freely of the excess that we have today because we trust that we will have the provision of tomorrow. It's a test. Will God provide what we need for tomorrow? Praying and living this portion of the Lord's Prayer. Give us what's necessary for today. It frees us from the weariness of yesterday, and it frees us from the worry of tomorrow. What was enough for yesterday won't sustain me today. What was good enough for yesterday isn't enough for today. God's given me what I need for today. He's given me what is necessary for today. And then what's necessary for tomorrow is not left over from today. Why? Because God is giving me new tomorrow. The question is, do we trust? I know that's difficult for me to swallow. It's difficult for me to think that I could live in a way where I could freely be generous with all that I've been entrusted with today, that I'm stewarding today. Why? Because I know that the Father has all of today already planned out, and I'm already going to be a recipient of what the Father's giving me tomorrow. Do I live with that kind of trust? That's a challenge. Even as I'm saying the words, I'm in, in my heart, I'm like, that's difficult to live with that kind of trust. Trust doesn't lead us to cling to what was provided for us yesterday, or lead us to cling to what was uh, uh, was provided for us today. Trust leads us to complete and total dependence on the provision of today, to waking up and receiving what? New mercies each morning, as it says in Lamentations 3. We wake up each day, receive new mercies for today. Tomorrow, yesterday is gone. Whatever was said about me, whatever I experienced, whatever went on is gone. And today God has given me all that is needed for new life today. To live, to breathe, and to glorify the Father. Why? Because I'm His child. Created to love and to glorify God him. So each and every day, he's providing for me. So as I close, here's some comfort for those of us who've struggled with this kind of trust. Because it sounds like a challenge. It sounds really difficult to think in that particular way. Or to live in that way. Here's the comfort in Exodus 16. We don't have to go there. 16, 27, and 28, the children of Israel disobey God's instructions to collect manna on, to not collect manna on the seventh day. They go out on the seventh day to collect, and it's not there. They were supposed to collect on the sixth day to last them the seventh day, and so they didn't obey. But what do we learn about God in this moment? Is He's patient with His children. So if that's you, if that's you this morning where you've lived in a way where I've not, I've not trusted the Lord, I'm not trusting the Lord for each and every day. I haven't been looking to the Lord. I haven't been acknowledging that God is my source for all of new life each and every day. The Father still loves you and is patient with us. We've been instructed how to trust God for our daily needs. And the reality is this, all of us have failed. All of us have failed to trust God at some point in time. Maybe we have moments where we succeed. Maybe we have moments where we we realize that our trust, that our hope, or that, that, that we know that the Lord is providing. We recognize our need. We acknowledge that He is our source and that He is providing what I need. 
whether that's represented in the fact that I don't have to cling to my excess today, I can freely give, I can give out of generosity, or whether that's just living day by day without acknowledging that God is my source, not myself. I am not my own God. I didn't give myself the knowledge that I have. I didn't give myself the strength that I have. I didn't give myself the job that I have. I didn't give myself the resource that I have, but all that I have is that of the Father's. I'm a steward. I am a steward of God's resource. I've been given His resource so that I may glorify Him. He's providing for my needs. He's providing for everything that I need in life, all that is necessary. I always say this, though. He and I might disagree on what I need. And so if you're in your life and you're thinking, I don't have everything that I need, I would argue with you to say that, the, that God says you do have what you need. He's given you all that you need. It may not be everything that you want, but God is providing for each and every need. To pray, give us today our daily bread, is to say, we recognize you are our source, and you are giving me each day all that I need. That's why I'm more and more and more convinced that this prayer should be part of our daily lives. It's shaping our desires it's shaping our, the way that we live. It's shaping the way that we acknowledge, we recognize, we trust, where we live with gratitude that you are my source. It's, it's interesting that in these few words, give us today our daily bread, what's happening just in those few words. It's not just a request. It's an acknowledgement. It's an awareness that he is the source. He is the reason that I live today and that I have today and that I have all that I need he is the reason why. Give us today our daily bread. You have provided everything that is necessary for life today. So all of us, at some point in time, we've failed in this effort time and time again. But our loving Father is patient with us this morning. And so my my, my kind of call to response this morning is this. Maybe that's what we need to confess. In the last three weeks, we've been doing this same practice at the end of the, the message. If you want to bring that up, we've been doing the same practice. We've been confessing our sins. We've been repenting, expressing our desire to turn from our sin. And then we've been praying. We've been praying for revival in hearts of God's people, and we've been praying for the lost. We've been bringing to mind the people who, in our lives, who need Jesus. And so this morning, as we take this time, maybe the confession that you need is, God, I've not been trusting you. I've not trusted you. I've not, I've not been aware each and every day that you are my source. I've been living with a confidence in myself. I've been living in a way that is arrogant, Father expecting to receive this without acknowledgement, without gratitude that you are my source. And so this morning, as we just take a few moments to enter into this practice, as individuals, as couples, as groups, however you want to enter into this moment, I want to ask everyone just to take a moment, confess your sins to the Lord, express your desire to turn from those sins, and then pray. Pray for the hearts of the people of God that we may be revived. Pray for the lost. Who are those who need Jesus? Let's pray.
Holy Father, forgive us our sins. Forgive us. Give us the power over the flesh, Lord. Give us the power to resist the temptation, Lord. Help us to see that you are our source, Lord. Help us to be reminded that our daily bread is from you. Each and every day as we wake, remind us, Lord, that you are our source because you are a good and loving Father caring for the needs of your children. Help us to become aware of that each and every day. I pray that the words today begin to transform our hearts, begin to shape us, begin to challenge us in new ways, begin to deepen our life spent with you, deepen our fellowship with you. I pray that our hearts become revived this morning. I pray that the lost souls that we brought before you this morning, Lord, we begin to experience something today that the Spirit of God would begin to draw them to you. Lord, give us the opportunity, give us the moment to share the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. To bear witness to the new life that we've been given, the resurrected life, Lord. We desire to see hearts changed. unto God. So be blessed this week. Uh, if you'd like to meet up, like to chat, uh, give me a call, give me an email, stop by my office. Uh, I'd love to chat with you. Be blessed and may peace be with you as you go through the week.